Warfare today is at the cusp of the third revolution in military affairs. And uh, as I said earlier, it's because of not one, two or three technologies as happened during the first and the second revolution in military affairs, but multiple kind of technologies ranging from sensors to advanced materials, propulsion, hypersonics, artificial intelligence, big data, quantum, cyber, space. And generally what happens is all these technologies are spoken in one breath. So one gets confused as to what's, how, the, how the warfare is going to change. So what I'll do is I'll classify all these technologies under three trends or three heads. And I'll do it and tell you as to how the outcome of war will be shaped because of these technologies. And the first technology you know, which I'll talk about is robotics and automation. So in this, you'll find unmanned systems which are being introduced or autonomous or automated kind of systems. You have things like manned and unmanned teaming. So a manned platform is controlling number of unmanned kind of platforms. You also have exoskeletal uh, that em em enhances, you know, uh, human performance. And uh, these are all part of this particular trend. So this is one area, uh, robotics and automation, which is happening. And how is going to change warfare? Warfare till now has always been between two humans, actually. One human may be better armed, you may have better body armor, you may be better equipped with a sword or a lance or a modern rifle. You may be having a better mobility, you may be a charger, a horse, another one could be on an elephant, and a modern fighter could be on an attack helicopter. But essentially combat was between two human beings. We are at the cusp of an era, the combat today could be between humans and machines tomorrow and between human, machines and machines. The second trend which I have identified, I've called it celerity, which is to do with something with velocity as well as speed. And this is coming about because of technologies like hypersonics, that is glide and cruise, fractional orbital systems that can go around the globe, stealth technologies which are making things stealthier, this is on one end. On the other hand, you have the slow movers, small cross-section drones, actually. They are getting armed, and they are being used in swarm technology. So that's the another trend which is happening. And we have this low radar signature drones, slow movers on one end, and on the other end, you have very high-speed uh, things uh, like hypersonics. And with intelligent routing, etc., this is making them invisible, inaudible, and undetectable, and hence untargetable. So... As I see the era of large platforms like ships, tanks, we're already seeing actually in this warfare. In Black Sea, we've seen a number of large platforms, Russians going out and the tanks. So the era of large platform probably uh, is, we'll have, it needs a review. And uh, maybe uh, the warfare actually, the, uh, the expansion of the battle phase, uh, space actually is unlimited now. So you could be targeted anywhere across the world. And uh, this is what can be called as ultimate non-linearity in warfare. So you could be targeted anyway. So this is going to create a paradigm shift in defense, actually. So you will require a resilient and a layered kind of a defense, especially air defense. So this is a fundamental change. The third change which is happening, or the third trend, is, I think, even more revolutionary. And I would call it as intelligentization of warfare. And uh, this is the third technological trend, and this is happening because of improvement in data processing systems with enablers like artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data, large language models, supercomputing, edge computing, etc., etc. Uh, its impact is all pervasive. Uh, digitization of battlefield is contributing towards actually its intelligentization. And interlinking and integrating of complex systems and platforms as also various domains of warfare. So what we are seeing is a gradual shift from net-centric warfare to data-centric kind of warfare. So in net-centric warfare, the emphasis was on information kind of superiority, whereas in data-centric warfare, the superiority is based on your superiority of decisions, actually. So it's a cognitive superiority which you're taking. So if in a combat there were 10 situations or 10 actions one, two adversaries had to take, the one which is based on artificial intelligence and big data is always taking faster and better decisions. So your decisions are better so that ultimately you will win. The guy who has this will win in combat. If you remember, I think sometime back, uh, the Chinese used to talk that they are moving away from 
informatized warfare to intelligent warfare. So this is what it, they meant actually. They're moving from data-centric warfare to, uh, sorry, from they're moving from net-centric warfare to data-centric kind of warfare. So these are the three last trends in warfare which is occurring. There are other technologies also which do affect all of them. So one is like say quantum technologies, which is a niche field and has the potential again in the domains of computing, communication, cryptography, sensing, medicines, and much more. So this is going to affect all these, what I said, it may affect robotics, it may affect celerity, it may affect a data-centric warfare, and it will affect both offensive and defensive aspects. Similarly, we have advances in uh, material and manufacturing technologies, but these are actually, again, uh, will help, say, uh, celerity as well as data-centric, but essentially they are sustaining technology. So what they're doing is uh, they are making things uh, smaller, faster, cheaper, and easy to manufacture. So if you have a platform, you have a missile, that will make it lighter, that will make it faster. So these are kind of sustaining technologies which are happening. So what do we call as disruptive technologies, actually? What is actually going to disrupt? I spoke about three major trends in technologies. They surely are disruptive kind of technologies because uh, they will change the way we've been actually fighting warfare. But uh, the effects of this still can be predicted. Means I've been speaking about how these three technology trends are actually going to change warfare. So if you are able to understand the effect of these in battlefield, then actually they're not actually disruptive technologies. The disruptive effects, I believe, will be caused by technologies when you're mixing these three or four technologies with each other. If you, say, mix artificial uh, hypersonics with advanced materials, or quantum sensing with space weapons, so you can target things, you know, at thousands of kilometers, maybe uh, lakhs of kilometers away with pinpoint accuracy. Quantum computing with cyber or network security, artificial intelligence and autonomous weapons. So this is going to cause a disruptive kind of an effect between these three trends. Let me now switch on to the new domains of warfare. Uh, what we are, uh, uh, both uh, these uh, Changes which are happening are happening at an unprecedented pace, and we are also uh, transcending into new domains of warfare, that is cyber and space. And uh, I believe that uh, wars, if they happen in future, uh, are likely to be fought on a new domain first, and if not, then it's going to influence uh, warfare in the older domain. And historically, it's been true. So when we had, uh, um, for maritime domain, always influenced warfare on land. And, uh, it's also decided warfare by itself, actually, the outcome of war. And when we had developed uh, uh, air as a domain of warfare, that started influencing warfare on uh, land as well as maritime domain. And some of the wars were actually decided in air, like the First Gulf War. First Gulf war. So, uh, so these are new domains of warfare, cyber and space, maybe. In tomorrow's war, actually, would be fought first in cyber or in the space domain. So, so this will require new kind of concepts. Like today, airspace will have to be actually combined with near space. When I'm talking about near space, you're looking at actually hypersonics. You're looking at those balloons with the Chinese head flown, which are flying at almost 100 kilometers. Or you're looking at HAPS, that is uh, high altitude pseudo uh, web, uh, uh, systems. Uh, and such kind of uh, weapons. Uh, so I'll be talking briefly about this space and warfare in cyber. Like cyber, we all know, is actually a synthetic domain. And uh, it's man-made. We don't reside in that space, actually, to fight in that space, unlike land, maritime, and air. We live there, we fight there. We don't reside there. So uh, it, has, it holds significant relevance across the full spectrum of warfare, serving as both a potential tool for state as well as non-state actors. That's a major change, actually. So this capability resides also with non-state. As the battlefield gets digitized, which I spoke about, you know, data-centric warfare, and warfare becomes intelligent, it will increasingly be vulnerable to cyber threats. Cyber defense against these a robust training, strategic foresight, and a coherent framework to ensure effective defense and retaliation. As I said earlier, when I, before cyber, that you know, the space could be another domain, but today we are not still at that level that we still reside in space to fight. So space has these three segments, that's the ground segment, space segment, and user segment. Even the space segment is actually controlled from land. So 
uh, warfare still would be fought from land, but effects would be on space. And this is going to become important because all nations are relying on uh, space assets for ISR, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, communication, navigation, targeting, etc. All this is happening. And uh, this is, again, going to be a major force multiplier. Both these technologies, I believe, uh, are going to affect the relationship between a leader, the staff, and three combat units. That's been essential, actually. There are three elements who fight war. There's always a leader, there are combat units, combat support units, logistics, and there is a staff. Now, if you don't have uh, in space and cyber, this uh, relationship between leader, staff, and combat units is blurring, actually. So you'll have to define what kind of warfare will be uh, happening in future if you are looking at cyber and space. Uh, well, uh, people who are part of combat units may also be leaders in space and cyber because they're controlling things from ground. And they may be a requirement of no kind of a staff.